I've been using this Lava for some time now, and I noticed it would be hard to make a review, cause there's barely anything to complain about this lens. It's earning its place in my main macro setups, and I'll show you how my experience with it is going. Here in the rainforest, it pays off to go small, and paying attention to the small details is how you get to see the weirdest and the lesser seen animals. It's how I managed to get back with hundreds and hundreds of photos after a single hike. I'm used to shoot with a bit more magnification than two times, but the aperture coupling of this lens is a great advantage over my usual reverse lenses. The aperture coupling maintains a bright viewfinder until you take the shot, and this makes everything so easy, it's really easy to judge focus and it almost feels like cheating if you're used to permanently stop down reverse lenses. You can see it came with the hood included, and I remember my first thought holding the lens is that it's way heavier than what it looks. Not saying it's a heavy lens by any means, uh, but being all metal, uh, it's well built. And right from the bat, what sets it apart from even other previous Lola is that now they finally included uh, a ship for aperture control. Uh, this is a first in third-party macros, and the biggest advantage of this lens for me. I like that they also included the uh, depth of field scale. Not many modern lenses have this. In practice, I never had to look at it, but I'm happy to know it's there. The focus ring is metal too instead of rubber. It turns smoothly, but it's a bit tight. It's difficult to flick it with just one finger. And as you can see, the focusing is all internal. The lens doesn't extend beyond its external size. Uh, this is a big deal too if you're getting the equivalent of four times magnification on um, something that feels like a very balanced setup. I remember how much the Canon MPE and the Metacon 85 extends to get 5 times magnification. Probably couldn't shoot single-handed with one of those. Uh, that's one of these cases where Micro Four Thirds really shines, and it's amazing how Lowa managed to keep it that small. I love that Laua really put effort into design lenses for Micro Four Thirds, instead of simply adapting the mount from the other system lenses, like most makers do. This latest generation of macros started with the 100mm for full frame, the 65 APS-C, and now the 50mm for Micro Four Thirds. All actually different lenses tailored for each system instead of simply switching mounts. Now, I'm not someone that worries about sharpness in macro, as every modern lens is fine at f8 and diffraction is the bottleneck, but I'm impressed with how sharp this is even in wide open. The detail at 2.8 is so fine that you can tell it how to resolve the sensor. Uh, that quality is consistent edge to edge, and it's scary how good it is wide open. There's also some vignetting, see how that goes away now at f5.6. Sharpness decreases a bit evenly. I feel like I don't even need to compare the center with corner here because it outperforms the same. Uh, here's the sharpness at f8, it's decreased again, but it's where I imagine most people will use it. It's a good compromise between sharpness and depth of field. 
And here at F10, it's the lowest I will go and it's the aperture I use most of the time. I tried this lens with a small extension tube since the beginning and it didn't create any weird side effects, you're just gonna have to use a larger aperture to fight the diffraction. These were shot with a 10mm tube at f9. Something else that stands out in quality is how well controlled the chromatic aberration is. I should how and didn't apply any CA correction. Uh, usually it's part of my default processing, but with the Lawa I still didn't manage to get it show up in any picture. Uh, longitudinal chromatic aberration is also non-existent, as you can see in these autofocus letters. Now about bokeh, I don't think there's anything special. Uh, wide open at portrait distance, it can get pretty busy, and the bokeh balls will have a bright outline, uh, so don't go expecting something that doubles well as a portrait lens. Otherwise, in macro, the autofocus areas are smooth enough, even wide open. Stop down and the bokeh will get an hexagonal shape. I guess something I can complain about this lens is that it's not weather sealed. For someone that shoots in the rainforest like me, that would be a great feature. Otherwise, it does really, really well for the price. And I'd say for sure it's one of the best options you can get for Micro Four Thirds Macro. I hope this was a helpful insight on this pretty new lens. Thanks for watching.